thanks for joining this JNUP 2021 presentation on Wandera, the latest addition to the JAMP family. Uh, we're here today to talk to you about Wandera, the company, the use cases that we help address, um, and the technology behind the company. As background, I think many of you are aware that JAMP completed its acquisition of Wandera just earlier this year. Uh, and so today's session is really going to be an introduction to the basics of Wandera. I'm also hoping to help you navigate the other Wandera-based talks that are part of JNUC this year uh, so that you know which presentations you can prioritize based on your role or your business uh, and the, the problems that you might be facing within your organization. I'm Michael Covington. I'm Vice President of Product Strategy. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about context setting for the environment in which we think Wandera is going to be best suited. Wandera really came about as a result of digital transformation and the establishment of the modern workplace. I know, big fluffy words. Uh, what it ultimately means is that many businesses started to tear down those perimeter walls that kept people and technology inside and really enabled them to be productive outside of those perimeter walls. One of the big enablers that allowed this to happen was mobile and the adoption of mobility within the enterprise. And whether it was allowing people to utilize a corporate issued mobile device, iPhone or an iPad outside of the corporate walls or the permission to use a BYOD device, really what this uh, adoption of mobility allowed people to do was to be more productive on their own time in their own way of being productive. Uh, there's some really great statistics about people moving away from desktops and laptops, computers to, to get their work done. And iPads, iPhones uh, were really the, the tip of the iceberg for this. And now we're starting to see uh, even more innovative technologies that allow people to consume information and create it while on the go. But it's not just the devices that were leaving the enterprise and the campus, it's applications as well. We know that about 85% of enterprise workloads and applications have already migrated to the cloud. Uh, and this is not just uh, the public compute that's available out there through organizations like uh, AWS, Microsoft with Azure, as well as Google Compute. Uh, there's a lot of SaaS applications that businesses are really starting to adopt and allow divisions within the enterprise to utilize. And it's allowing people to be more productive more rapidly. They don't have to wait for IT to vet software, to deploy it across all the endpoints. And so really the, the broad adoption of mobility and the fact that applications have left the data center have really led to a, a revolution in terms of productivity and what people are able to access when they're outside of the workplace. Wandera was established to help people secure the devices and the workers that were working outside of the business, while at the same time provide new modern technologies that connected them to those data sets and applications that helped workers stay productive. Wandera really is an end-to-end -end set of technologies. We've got some capabilities that are meant to protect endpoints. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here in just a few minutes. We have some capabilities that manage data connections, leaving the device, going out to the internet. And we also have some great capabilities that connect workers to business applications in fast, very efficient ways when they're on the go. Let's talk about these uh, in a little bit more detail. I think one thing to note up front here is that Wandera is a cloud-delivered set of services. And it's not just one SKU. There's a number of different services here, and they're all joining the JAMP family. So I'll talk you through the, the capabilities that we have here at a really high level, and then we'll do a double click on each of these services and give you just a taste for some of the use cases they help address and challenges they help customers solve. I'll start with JAMP Threat Defense. JAMP Threat Defense is what's known as a mobile threat defense or MTD solution. It's really about protecting those mobile endpoints. And here we're gonna be talking about iOS, iPadOS, and surprise, Android. We're gonna be able to support all of those operating systems for mobile workers, and we're not limited to just managed devices. We're gonna be able to support BYOD devices here as well. And Wondera's got a really innovative approach to the market. And that is the way that we protect the device from a couple of different perspectives. And I'll show you more in detail in just a few slides. Up next is going to be a service that's called JAMP Data Policy. JAMP Data Policy is really all about managing usage of the device that's outside of the perimeter. 
the best equivalent here to a traditional kind of legacy appliance is going to be a secure web gateway or a next gen firewall. A lot of organizations are used to being able to monitoring connections that are going out to the Internet, uh, implementing filtering rules, really regulating the types of content that individuals can utilize when they are physically in the building. What happened when people left the workplace is that the business lost visibility. They lost control of those endpoints and they lost the ability to impart uh, very specific policies that were important to the business, whether they were acceptable use policies, regulatory compliance, and some new and interesting challenges that actually popped up as we started to look at people using uh, cellular data connections. Um, in this particular scenario, we've got really flexible policy controls. I'm really excited to show you a couple of screenshots as we dig into the session here today to give you a taste for what this service is able to do and how dynamic it is to really respond to the needs of not just the organization as a whole, but different divisions or different regions where you may choose to roll this out. The final service that we'll talk about here today is Jamf Private Access. Think of this as remote access reimagined, VPN replacement or alternative. Uh, this is a new technology called Zero Trust Network Access. It's been on the market for several years now. Wondera is one of the recognized leaders in this space. And really what this is about, it's about protecting your business applications. And one of the really unique things about Wondera solution and now Jamf Private Access is our ability to deliver the service with no on-premise in infrastructure required. That means no hardware you need to maintain, no uh, service contracts that you need to manage on site. Uh, this is something that can also connect your workers to any business application. It can be on-premise, it can be in the cloud, it can even be a SaaS application, and you do it all through one console. Now, I'll talk about these services individually because I think it's really important to isolate the use cases and talk about them in a little bit of depth. It's important to maybe just point out here at the top, all of these are delivered from a single platform. We'll often refer to this as the Jamf Security Cloud. It's a cloud delivered service where you as the customer can go in and turn on the services that are most important for your business. And you can mix and match as appropriate for different parts of the workforce. Um, it's also worth noting that the services work very well together, as you might imagine. We'll talk in uh, detail about how the threat defense service specifically aimed at targeting uh, endpoints and keeping them protected can be used to power access policies for business applications. Some really cool things that we're doing there with native conditional access and adaptive access to provide more streamlined access to business apps while also providing better security for your organization. So without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, dive into the very first service there, Jamf Threat Defense. And I told you that the service was unique in the way that it's delivered and the types of threats that we can help protect your organization from. And the reason for that is that we've done things a little bit differently from the other MTD vendors that are out on the market. With Jamf Threat Defense, we have a capability that is quite consistent with the industry. It's on the device. As you would imagine with an endpoint-oriented security solution, we are on the device monitoring for threats and protecting from things that might land on the device, such as configuration vulnerabilities, like a, a rogue profile that could introduce risk into your uh, iPhone or a vulnerable operating system that may need to be patched. We also have the ability to have visibility into applications. Now, many people immediately assume we're talking about malware here, and that's absolutely the case. We've got some really innovative technologies here to help protect the organization from malicious apps that your workers may install on their devices. But we go a step further here. We help you manage good apps that might become vulnerable or have uh, exploits that are in the wild. We help you manage applications that may be leaky in that they're not protecting usernames, passwords, credit card information, as that information is plugged into the app and sent across the internet. We also allow you to define watch lists so that your organizations can specifically define what's important to you in terms of what makes an app risky and what types of policy actions you might want to bring to bear. And last but not least, as you think about the stack that we build up on the device, we've already talked about kind of protecting the device at its foundation, practicing good security hygiene. We've talked about making sure that only good apps are in use on these devices. We also look at the infrastructure that the device attaches to. Uh, we're looking for things like man in the middle attacks and protocol attacks that might actually compromise your users 
when they are uh, transacting uh, and sharing secure information over the internet. But this is where things get a little bit different. This is where Wandera adds some additional capabilities that actually go off of the device and physically into the network. We have advanced capabilities that allow us to provide a zero day phishing protection to any worker using Jamf threat defense. And what this is, is it's an inline service that actually looks for uh, any destination address that the user may action on their device, whether they're plugging it into their browser or they're clicking on a, an actual phishing attack that's come across in SMS. And uh, we'll intercept that request, we'll scan it, make sure that the page is safe before allowing the user to continue. Really, really differentiated technology, not only in the fact that it's being delivered from the network, but that we're able to do this in a way uh, that is using machine learning and some advanced techniques to identify uh, phishing attacks that have never been seen before. And I'll talk to you in just a little bit more detail about some of the technology behind this. But we didn't stop there either. Phishing may be the number one concern for mobile uh, organizations that have adopted uh, mobile workers, um, but also we look at all other forms of network risk. Uh, this can be command and control traffic, it can be data exfiltration, it can be other indicators of compromise that happen at the network layer. We're able to utilize our position in the network to actually see all of the requests that are going to and from the device to not only look for anomalies in behavior, but to look for known bad destinations that we can actually go and apply policy to. Um, Wandera and now Jamf Threat Defense is one of those capabilities that, uh, that is one of those uh, solutions that actually has capabilities to not only detect threat, but to prevent it through policy action as well. And one of the things I don't have time to go into detail uh, on today, but there are other talks at JNUT this year that will provide additional color here, um, is the infrastructure that we're utilizing to provide this service. It actually is quite varied based on what your deployment needs are going to be. We have customers that utilize an inline proxy when they want to use uh, the service to get a much more robust set of inspection capabilities. But we also have some much more lighter touch solutions that are available for BYOD environments and uh, other scenarios where there may be worker councils uh, that may need to be part of the process of approving the solution to be installed. So lots of configuration here just in the deployments um, and, and depth of capability when you look across the types of threats that we're able to identify within the service. Now, I mentioned advanced data science and machine learning. And this is an area far outside of my area of expertise, but I can tell you that the root of the Wandera threat detection capabilities are our deployed sensors. Uh, we have sensors around the world, hundreds of millions, if you can believe that, uh, both devices that are activated and actively using the service, web crawlers that are out looking for new domains that could be launching attacks tomorrow, uh, as well as uh, web and app store monitoring solutions to look for new developers that might be emerging on the scene, new applications that are being published uh, into the app store. Uh, and we're constantly looking for threats that we can get ahead of it to make sure that it doesn't land on the device and actually impact the end user. Uh, our solution, in addition to having all of these different sensors, also has very advanced data science techniques that operate in line and with live data. This allows us to identify not only those phishing attacks that I was describing, but new applications that haven't been identified as being malicious just yet, simply because of indicators that we've identified with being bad from them. There are going to be additional talks that do a deep dive on this service, but I will note, you might notice from the slide here today, we call this service Miriam. This is the personification of our threat intelligence engine, uh, and it's something that has actually been recognized in the industry as being a leading capability for Jamf threat defense, and one that really sets us apart from the pack. I've mentioned there's going to be other talks. There are going to be several deep dives, actually, on the Wandera security solution. Let me give you a pointer to just a few. Mike is going to give a great talk going through the infrastructure, the global architecture that we utilize to capture traffic from mobile devices, apply that policy in a very efficient way to make sure that latency isn't being introduced to the workers as they are working outside of that uh, corporate perimeter. And he's also gonna give you some insights into how we maintain uh, not only efficacy, but uh, resiliency of the service as we are supporting uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, global enterprises within the service. 
Adam is actually going to do a deep dive on the, the Jamf Threat Defense Service itself. He'll talk to you about all of the capabilities I've just been able to gloss over today. He'll talk to you about the configuration vulnerabilities in detail that we identify on the device, uh, all of the different types of app risks that we identify, as well as the network risk and all of those forms of content security that we're actually able to, pr to protect your organization from. Last but not least, I want to make sure that we uh, give a shout out to Milland, who's going to be talking about integrating the uh, Jamf Threat Defense Service into security operations. If an organization has a SIM or a SOAR platform, if you're utilizing a managed security service provider that might be able to utilize this data so that mobility is no longer a blind spot, Milland's going to be talking about the APIs and the various streams of data that we have to enable those additional add-ons. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of our most advanced talks for JNUC this year. David is going to do a deep dive specifically on some of the data science behind our phishing protections. And Pavel is going to talk about some of our zero-day malicious app detection capabilities, some really innovative academic-style research that we've been doing uh, to improve our overall malicious app uh, detection capabilities. With that, I'm going to move on and talk about now Jamf data policy. This is gonna be the service that provides real-time, very important to emphasize that real-time capability, uh, both insights as well as policy control on workers and the devices that they use in really a hybrid work scenario. It's really important to point out that this service, none of the services I'm talking about here today are actually restricted to mobile devices or devices that have to be outside of the perimeter. The policies here are so flexible that you can define a different policy for a worker when they're using Wi-Fi than when they're using cellular. And there's a lot of different reasons that organizations might have to uh, put policies in place to manage the types of connections that workers are allowed to initiate from their uh, work devices or the devices that they utilize in a work capacity at some time. Uh, the service that we're gonna be talking about here, Jamf Data Policy, is really, I think, geared towards corporate liable devices. I mentioned you're able to mix and match the services. So for a BYOD user, you'd probably think more about threat defense for them. The data policy is gonna be a nice add-on that allows you to kind of manage what I think of as security adjacency. It's gonna help you deal with those threats of users that might be accessing inappropriate content, say adult or gambling type content. It's also gonna help you manage the financial risks that come with these always on cellular connections that many businesses are giving their workers these days to stay productive. If you think of a worker who typically is in a domestic job who suddenly visits a foreign country, that visit, whether it's a vacation or a work trip, could cost the business a lot of money if they weren't prepared for that individual to go roaming. We actually have capabilities to help manage that use case. And last but not least, as we're talking about real-time visibility and policy, uh, there is an element of being able to manage shadow IT very, very effectively here for devices that are outside of that corporate perimeter. And you can do all of this without the need for a VPN. And that's, I think, the really exciting thing here is that you're not having to backhaul traffic. You're able to apply policy wherever that worker is roaming in the world in a very uh, bandwidth efficient and friendly way. So, you know, there are needs, as we've talked about, for um, organizations to put these policies in place. When we talk specifically about the Jamf Data Policy Service, it's really, really important that I just emphasize the service is incredibly flexible. Uh, we've got configurable user notifications, real-time capping so that as soon as users hit up against the rules that you put in place, we can implement policy against them. And we also have the ability to optimize bandwidth to really ensure that the bandwidth that you're paying for is being used efficiently. Uh, there's some clever things that we're able to do with the network layer that allows to ensure that your user gets uh, the best possible network connection that's available to them. So just to give you a little bit of, of additional color here on the services themselves and kind of the little nuanced aspects of a Jamf data policy, I'll talk to you first about the network usage oriented controls. These are going to be the controls where you're really thinking about policy in terms of megabytes and gigabytes. How much data should end users have access to? Um, we think of this in terms of caps, really thresholds that you can define. Uh, we allow users to hit up against the cap and maybe you just want to take a policy action of notifying them. Hey, you've reached your limit for the month. Please be respectful beyond this point. But we also have the ability to implement hard caps, which essentially uh, prevent that user from utilizing their data connection beyond the thresholds that you've configured. 
There are allow lists that you can configure that allow specific apps as well as websites to continue to be accessed after those thresholds have been uh, hit up against. And you can go so far as to configure your company icon as well as a, a, a message from the IT department so that users know exactly what policies they're hitting up against uh, and so that they can course correct on behavior along the way. It's also worth noting, I showed you earlier a screenshot from the mobile app. The Jamf app actually has the capability to communicate with the, with the user, give them lots of information along the way. Many of them won't hit up against policy simply because they're informed as to what the policy is and where they are in their overall usage to this point in the month. There's a couple of different use cases that I think are interesting and might be just be worth calling out to highlight the flexibility of this service. The first is to simply apply policy on users when they go roaming. The other is to look at tethering. Uh, you know, it's interesting with a tethering control from device management, the device management might be able to disable tethering, but the user can go on and, and flip that mobile hotspot right back on. Uh, Jamf data policy, because it sits in line, has the ability to see when the user activates that tethering interface and data starts flowing across it. We can use that to do some really clever things to make sure that that tethering policy is enforced as your organization sees fit. Last but not least, I'll give you a counter policy. This is one where you actually want to disable caps for specific groups, say, for example, the C-suite or the executive group. Uh, this is really helpful if you have an organization where you want to make sure that you're, you're not capping your executives uh, or limiting the type of things that they're able to access while they're on the go if they travel often. Megabyte and gigabyte controls is really just one aspect of, of the overall Jamf data policy service. We also have a very robust content filtering solution that works for both websites and apps, and you have incredible control by content category, organizational group, network interface, and more. Tons of controls for you to get down so that this can be very specific uh, to the end user or the group that you want to have implemented. In terms of use cases, some customers don't turn policies on at all. They just want to gain an understanding of how their mobile devices are being utilized, what applications they need to be investing in for the future. Those that do choose to enforce policies are likely to gravitate towards acceptable use policies or to enable worker choice so that they can let people download the apps of their choosing, but ensure that they're only used at appropriate times. I think a really good example here is going to be a streaming service like Netflix or Disney Plus, a lot of customers just want to allow that to be utilized on Wi-Fi. They don't want to restrict their workers, uh, but they do want to make sure that they're being respectful of um, the, the data connections that they have that might be costing the business money. We've got two great talks that are going to be a deep dives on Jamf data policy. Suzanne is going to really get in and talk about every little aspect and configuration that's available within the service. And Sam is going to talk about how we can actually apply Jamf policies on Windows devices. So tune into both of those talks if you're interested in learning more about both uh, megabyte and gigabyte usage controls, as well as the overall content filtering solution that we have for these different devices. So last but not least, let's talk about Jamf Private Access. As I mentioned at the start, Jamf Private Access is a modern remote access solution. It's an alternative to VPN. It's a better way of connecting your workers, no matter where they're connecting from, to your business applications. And again, those applications can be hosted anywhere. There's really three key pillars of differentiation that we speak of when we're talking about Jamf Private Access. First and foremost, it provides a more secure solution for remote access. It's going to provide a direct line from your worker into an individual business application, not the entire network, not the entire data center. So much more robust security that's going to prevent lateral movement to your other applications should that device or worker be compromised. It's also a more manageable solution in that there's no infrastructure required for you to manage on-premise at all. No hardware, no support contracts, no certificates even for you to distribute. Uh, it is entirely cloud hosted and there are components for you to run in your DMZ if that is the uh, appropriate um, kind of solution dictated by your network security team. And last but not least, we really built not only private access, but all of these new uh, security services uh, with the user in mind. And particularly as it relates to private access, 
we've made the solution essentially so it fades into the background. The user is not going to be getting repeat MFA prompts uh, every couple of hours to re-sign into their applications. They're not going to see their battery drain quickly like they will with a legacy VPN. They're going to get a very performant connection to their business applications, and your IT staff is going to get some great visibility into what those connections are so that you can further optimize your infrastructure and make the appropriate application investments. Just to double click on those few key points as it relates to stronger application security, I mentioned that we do provide tunnels direct to individual applications. Well, this is proper zero trust network access. That means we're not only providing encrypted tunnels, but we're doing so in a risk informed way. That means we're taking risk assessments of every endpoint that connects over the service. And if you wanna make sure that a compromised device doesn't have access to your business applications, that is a connection a policy that you can configure. As it relates to management, I mentioned that there are no certificates to, to manage. That means that you can deploy the solution not only to your corporate liable devices and your managed devices, but all of your unmanaged devices as well. The application is available in the public app store. We provide an integration with your identity provider. So whether it's Microsoft, Azure, Active Directory, um, uh, Okta, or many of the others that uh, you can utilize through Federation, uh, you can really allow your end users to sign into this easily using their existing business single sign-on credentials and then never touch the app again. Uh, so no new accounts, no new IT workflows, and it supports BYOD as well as contractors and consultants that might need to utilize the service. Finally, around the user experience, the key to this uh, from our solution perspective is to use a better protocol than legacy VPN is using. We're using a, pri a, a protocol here for Jamf Private Access that uses first packet authorization. That means there's no extensive handshake required to establish those encrypted tunnels between the device and the business application. It also means minimal battery drain, minimal device performance impact, um, and great speeds for the user and for mobile workers in particular, as they go from cellular to Wi-Fi and back again, they won't have to incur big delays as they uh, hop between networks. I'm really only able to scratch the surface for you today as it relates to Jamf Private Access. This is a really exciting capability that we have to protect applications, uh, cloud hosted, as I mentioned, lots of great real-time insights. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about this particular solution, please attend Matt's talk on uh, Jamf Private Access, where he will do a deep dive on the surface. Uh, he will walk you through uh, all of the underpinnings, uh, the global infrastructure that we have in place to route uh, uh, packets from your workers, uh, as well as to ensure that uh, your data is controlled, whether it be by region or just through these micro tunnels that we're utilizing to keep your data and your workers safe. As we zoom back out and look at the Jamf Security Cloud, all three of these new services that have been added to the portfolio, there's a broad and deep ecosystem of technical alliance partners that we've brought into the mix to help organizations deploy better um, and to manage the solution over the long term. Uh, as it relates to deployments, we have capabilities that uh, really are there to provide seamless remote install, as I mentioned, provide single sign-on, even make the solution tamper resistant so users can't remove it on those corporate liable devices. We have capability to integrate with existing workflows, whether it be lifecycle management with your UEM uh, group and policy mapping so that you don't have to manage the, the policy controls exclusively in the Wandera service. Lots of opportunity to get uh, bi-directional information exchange uh, between a number of solutions, uh, not just device management. Uh, and then as it relates to policy enforcement, we have integrations with SIM, with SOAR, with EDR solutions, really taking all that rich security data and allowing you to pull it out and use it in a way that you see fit, but also APIs for you to push data back into the solution, whether it be risk assessments of endpoints where you're running another endpoint protection solution and you want to use that in conjunction with Jamf Private Access, uh, or uh, others where you can actually import your organization's custom threat intelligence. So really exciting set of ecosystem partners that we bring to bear there. In terms of the global network, I mentioned Mike's talk is gonna go into this in great detail. We've got a number of pops around the world that are gonna ensure that your worker gets the best performance no matter where they roam to. Uh, and that infrastructure that we have is globally deployed as well. 
meaning they're going to have policy that really matches uh, wherever that worker is going to be located. They're not going to have to be backhauling traffic to the organization's edge, which is really good for performance. In terms of market leadership and recognition, all of the leading analysts cover the spaces that we're in today, uh, whether it be uh, pri uh, private access with the ZTNA solution, uh, mobile threat defense, and we've been recognized by all the leading analysts. So I encourage you to go and uh, seek out your, uh, your Gartner uh, subscription, take a look at the reports. If you don't have it, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to share a copy uh, and let you see what the, what the market is saying about the solutions that are out there. And as we start to wrap up in closing, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that there is gonna be a fantastic live demonstration and one that you can actually interact with. Uh, if you attend Lucas's talk, he's going to do a deep dive on Wondera, the platform, in the hands-on interactive lab. So I think that's going to be a great way for you to get in, really get a feel for the types of policies that can be configured uh, and the reports that are going to be available. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. I hope that you found this interesting, that you got something out of today's talk, and that you also have uh, some pointers on additional talks that might be able to allow you to get a little bit uh, further along in understanding these new capabilities that were introduced into the Jamf portfolio. Thanks again for attending.